Y'all go to Volleyball so I don't have to explain it to my neighbors. 2018 Volleyball V90 TA Twin Engine. Before we continue, we would like to thank Hame and Auto of Uvascular for making this review possible. Their inventory of these new generation Volvos is incredible and their no BS attitude was really helpful and much appreciated. Okay, cut the futuristic music and cue the FCG jazz. Let's start by looking at the past. past, past, past. In our youth, Volvo was a company of a split personality. The obvious personality was the go-to family estate that didn't really require further explanation. It was big and safe and well equipped for its price. But Volvo also had its dark side of the moon back then, an enthusiastic cult following who hooned around the town sideways at night with these old buck-shaped northern Ferraris. So, 2.5 kids, a house in the suburbs and a Labrador dog by day. Turbocharged, styling-free sideways machine by night. This was Volvo. This is Volvo. Headlights styled by people with thin specs, dressed in Jay Lindenberg, well thought out lines and shapes. Beautiful matte wood trim mixed with the finest Swedish moose leather. Phone applications for remotely honking your horn. And to top it all off, the gear shifter is replaced by the Swedish Oreforz crystal sculpture. On the surface at least, this is all very impressive, especially when you consider that this isn't a rebadged Kia with the engine out of your neighbor's van. It's an individual product where every bit and piece is designed and made, rather than bought and bolted on. And this is clearly visible in every little detail. There's nothing that looks quite like this on the road today. In Finland, this means happy times for the Volvo customer, because he can finally get a very exciting looking product with interesting materials and throughout good looks, without resorting to looking like a 30-something jerk in a BMW, or like a 60-something jerk in a Mercedes. But still, the potential Volvo customer will be looking for the same kind of usability and functionality that he or she did back when we first won the Swedish in the finals. To find out if the V90 is still a proper Volvo, we need to dig deeper beyond the matte food win matte food win the matte wood finishes and the crystal gear knobs. And that's why I'm packing up the family and we're going to the Ahtari Zoo to look at pandas and mooses and bear. The older ones were rear-wheel drive, of course, which made them great winter toys for the local youth. But even when they turned front-wheel drive in the 90s, the younger generation fanboyism didn't stop. The reason for this was fairly simple the above-average power output. In the 90s, it wasn't every day you saw a big family estate with over 200 horsepower. This was a fact that pleased the humble family man as well as the reckless youth and enthusiasts. What about the T8 then? It's safe to say that it's marketed more as a low-emission hybrid than a performance machine. Under the hood, and this bunch of plastic covering, we have a 2-liter engine with both a supercharger and a turbocharger. And when you couple this with a couple of electric motors in the back, this slant yacht would, uh, will actually go to 100 in under 5 seconds. I won't bore you with too much technical details on this powertrain setup, but it needs to be said, it's more complicated than offside in football is to my girlfriend. There are approximately 700 different chargers and electric motors and bits and bobs, which all need to work in perfect harmony to generate, store and consume electricity, as well as create raw power and torque. While only time will tell how well this setup is actually put together, in the here and now it works seamlessly for the most part. So that's your everyday family usability. As the flagship big Volvo estate, I wasn't surprised to find out that it still is, well, a Volvo estate. There's enough room in the back to hold a small tennis tournament and with this T8 twin engine setup, enough power to overtake every single caravan in Finland. And at this point I was going to film the pandas and the reindeers and other furry animals at the zoo, talk about its fuel economy and the Swedish design and just call it quits. But for us, the Finnish car guys, the most important part was still missing. disappeared in order to make way for the CO2 regulations and crystal gear knobs? Or is there still a hoodlum spirit living underneath? To 
find out I needed to ditch the family, go pick up the boys and take a little road trip to watch our nation's capital, Helsinki, in high hopes of finding out whether you could still unleash the hoodlum spirit of the prancing moose in the V90. Obviously it's not a rear-wheel drive drift machine, nor is it a light and nimble corner eater. With all its multiple engine technologies, it actually weighs over two tons. Yeah, I think for a two ton behemoth this is actually quite agile when you're really on it. Yeah, and I think the long wheelbase makes it quite steady to drive. Um, it keeps it very um, focused on where it's going. Not a lot of body roll and um, behaves fairly well even even on a, on a tighter uh, mountain road or whatever forest road you're driving on. Yeah, there's, there's some steering feel, not much, but uh, there is still some. And uh, when you're cornering, you can... You can feel in the steering wheel when you're cornering hard, you can feel the car kind of sucking itself into yeah. a corner. And for a two-ton car, that's amazing. 300 horsepower going to the front. So um, it's very front biased and like I tried to get it into an all-wheel drive drift, which it's, it's, it's not possible with this. And also what I noticed is that it's a, since it's an automatic gearbox, I can't even see which gear I'm in. Um, and it's kind of, for me, it's a bit annoying that I can't change the gears manually even if I wanted to, but I guess you get used to everything and that's not a problem that the regular uh, Volvo customer probably has. Yeah, at least not the inscription package customer, because I'm not sure if, if the R design package has some kind of a yeah. gear shifter. On these twisty roads it would have been beneficial to be able to change gears myself, but adding paddles to the steering wheel is only a 150 euro option. That in itself is a term that the German rivals are unaware of. 150 euro options? Nein, 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 das ist eine Option, starting from 1000 euros. And that's the thing. This example here costs just 78,000 euros. That's Finnish price, of course. But for comparison, a similar 5 series Beamer with the same kind of equipment would be well over 100,000 euros in Finland. So it's actually quite a bargain considering the power output, the design, the equipment and exquisite materials used. And of course, looking really closely here and there, you can find little hints of the Sub 5 series price. In our tester, the doors weren't perfectly aligned, for instance, and the onboard computer frozen us a couple of times. But these are just things needing minor adjustments, not something that's inherently and irreversibly flawed by design. And as I said, as for the powertrain, only time and hard usage will tell. But for now it works really smoothly and for the most part doesn't get confused even with more aggressive driving. So in conclusion, the Volvo still is the big family car with lots of modern safety equipment. But on the other hand, it's also a capable overtaking machine with lots of power. And it also doesn't get out of shape when going into a corner. The only things holding it back from aggressive driving style point of view really are the uh, missing shift paddles and a bit of an odd braking feel if I'm honest. But even that's due to the regenerative braking I guess. So the split personality can still be found, right? Well yeah, but actually come to think of it, these personalities are the two sides of the same coin. Sure, the autopilots and blind spot monitors are marketed as safety equipment, and for the most part they are. But safety is much, much more than helper software and gizmos. Safety is also the ability to overtake easily. Safety is being able to cope with surprising situations without the car handling erratically. And unlike the onboard computers or software, these are things that are designed so deep in a car that you cannot just go and update them from a cloud server. These are things that cannot be replaced by stability controls or lane keep assists. And on this Volvo, these are things that have been done properly. And for that, Volvo, we salute thee. Yeah, but we need to do this in English. Ah, alright, yes. But I can't add the address from your navigator. We'll just have to navigate ourselves then. Okay. And I hope you have a good weekend. Alright, same. You too.